Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, it is the 22nd, just barely, it's 3 o'clock in the morning on the 22nd of January, which means we finished the third week in 2024. And this is the week three update. Um, I've actually finished six books this week. Um, technically seven, but I think I pretty much counted the first one as last week because of when I made my video. Um, so yeah, I finished a lot of books, but no print books. So, um, I love finishing books. This is the whole point of the whole reading thing, but when I do my next genre blanket, when the one I've been working on is square and I finish off the edges and start a new one, it's going to have an extra feature. It is going to have an audiobook penalty row because I was really, really, really planning that I would be reading a lot of my print books this year. and. Yeah, my habit tends to be I turn on the audiobook, I listen to the audiobook. When it finishes, I automatically start the next audiobook, which means I'm never really focused on the other books. I'm just always in audiobooks. Um, I have been reading chapters of other books, but not enough to finish them. Um, so hopefully this week four um, reading will be more print books. I do have a lot that I need to finish that are actually uh, in print and specifically for January. Um, so that is my intention anyway for week four. Um, the books I finished for this past week for week three of January and of 2024 are Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld, um, The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt, Flood by Hilary Mantel, Diamond Dog's Turquoise Days by Alastair Reynolds, This Sweet Sickness by Patricia Highsmith, and The Glass Cell by Patricia Highsmith. So <clears throat> I had a, a bit more variation in genre um, in part because I read a romantic book. Um, not a genre romance, and it didn't have <clears throat> the, the uh, formulaic structures or anything like that, but a romance nonetheless. Um, <clears throat> romantic comedy is one that was highly recommended by several people, but most particularly um, Desmond Z last year. Um, really, really liked romantic comedy. And the way he talked about it was like, hmm, he doesn't seem like someone who really goes for the really mm, formulaic romance. So, um, yeah, I actually liked romantic comedy. Uh, it was really good. It was a little bit um, flat as far as plot only because I don't read romance. So in a lot of the books I do read, there's a romantic storyline, but that's not all that's happening in the book. So the one thing that I really um, had some issues with in reading romantic comedy, it wasn't issues with the book, it was just, um, I kept feeling, is this actually the plot? Like, when is something going to happen here? And uh, the romance is the thing that's happening. Yeah. So there's that. Um, still not my genre. Um, but romantic comedy is about a woman who works as a writer for a weekly live comedy show. Um, and it's based off of a lot of memoirs and true true accounts and um, other sources on Saturday Night Live 
and the show in the the book is called something else but it's really obviously Saturday Night Live and a Saturday Night Live sketch writer and you know the whole plot revolves around that and the writer ends up in a relationship eventually after some stuff with one of the um, hosts slash musical guests um, and this does happen there have been several relationships in real life between people on the Saturday Night Live team and famous people who show up there for um, hosting or musical entertainment um, so it's all kind of based on true stories but it's a, a novel and it was really good uh, I do recommend it, just, um, it's a romance, nothing else happens, yeah. <laughs> um, there's one extra detail on this one because I know some people following COVID have been really avoiding anything to do with um, stories about disease or about COVID, and if you are one of those people for whom it's a triggering thing, um, this may be not your book because um, COVID is something that they talk about. Um, so it's set during that era where people are worried about you know transmitting the disease and you know they wear personal protective gear and. Um, part of the plot revolves around people being sick from COVID. So there is that, uh, which makes it very um, realistic for those of us who've been alive over the past few years. Um, yeah, so uh, interesting. I think that's the first novel I've read where COVID was part of the background story of what's going on. Um, so, new era. I expect that books in the future that are set during the years of COVID will acknowledge the existence of COVID. And this is the first one that, that's like that. Um, so that was interesting. Um, the other books I read, let's see if I can move my little thingy so I can see my other little thingy. There we go. Um, so the Goldfinch was really good. It is on the box halls, 1001 Books You Must Read Before You Die. Um, it was one of the books added, I think, in the most recent edition of that list. <clears throat> um, it is very long, and it does start with a terrorist attack. So again, if you are triggered by these kinds of things, read with caution or read with a buddy. It is a good book, worth reading. And the whole book is not about terrorism, so you'll get through it. But if that's something that's triggering for you, don't be blindsided by it. It is in there. It establishes the beginning of the plot, and then it goes away, more or less. Um, the main character survives the attack and does have PTSD from it and is dealing with PTSD not always in healthy ways. And this is where the other trigger warnings in this book come in. I don't usually put those on my reviews, but on this book, if you are dealing with alcoholism or drug abuse, um, if those are things for you that reading books that put you in the mindset of doing drugs or consuming alcohol in an abusive manner, you don't want to read this book. Maybe not even with a buddy. Um, there's a lot of drug and alcohol content and it's written in such a way that if that's already a problem for you, this is going to be a hard book for you to get through in a healthy manner. Um, so very important on that one. Um, just the way it's portrayed, um, I would suspect that it's particularly triggering for a lot of people. Um, but it is a long book, so um, not as many people are running into that just because it is a long book and 
not a lot of people want to read a logbook. Um, yeah, so hopefully um, if those are issues for you, you have a buddy if you want to read it, that you can read it with other people and talk about it. Um, it is a good book. I did not like the main character. I absolutely did not like him. And other people I've talked to have said the same thing. He's annoying. Um, yeah. But he has friends that are good people and, and likable characters, including one that my favorite character, Boris, um, who is a Ukrainian born kid whose father moves all over the world and he has to go with him. I think doing engineering jobs that require going to different places. Anyway, um, he's multilingual. He's seen all sorts of stuff. And uh, yeah, he does definitely have a drugs and alcohol problem. <laughs> but he also has just a really fun personality. One of those people that if you meet them in real life, you really wish that they could get that um, addiction under control because they're such cool people and um, I'm not sure if Boris ever will but he's still a really cool character and he does seem as he gets older when he's an adult he does seem to have a bit more of a, a handle on his issues so it is not completely ruled by his addiction so um, there is that. And I won't say anything more about him because I don't want to spoil the book for you guys. Um, definitely worth reading as long as you have people you can talk to if it's going to be a rough book. Um, and then Flood by Hilary Mantel. Um, this is an audiobook that I came across while looking to see if I could find another source for the audiobooks for Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies. I am going to have to read it with my eyeballs. Just, yeah, I've gotten lazy. I, I know. You might have to hold the book and use my eyeballs to scan the pages. Like, wow. Um, yeah, and Wolf Hall in the um, large print edition is 900 pages. And it is large print, so it's not 900 pages of normal print, but <sighs> yeah. So I'm reading Wolf Hall still. Um, but Flood is fun. Um, it's set in a small town in northern England, I think. I think they're in the north. Um, yeah, and um, it's in the 50s, and the bishop has showed up and told the local um, parish priest that he needs to modernize that his parish is, you know, really behind the times and everything he's doing needs to be modernized. And to start with, he needs to get rid of all the idolatrous sculptures that are all, all throughout his church. Um, and the people that are attending this church, a lot of them are semi-literate or illiterate. A lot of them are very entrenched in a, a tradition where those statues are very, you know, meaningful to their religion, whether they're supposed to be or not, according to the bishop. So they come up with this plan to bury all the statues so that the bishop doesn't take them away or destroy them. So they dig shallow graves that they bury the statues um, and then uh, this guy shows up in town that might be somebody sent by the bishop might be a spy um, but at least seems like he's there to be the assistant that's been assigned to help the priest handle the modernization and running the church um, and from there uh, a lot of things change, uh, but maybe not in the direction the bishop wants. And it's just a really fun book. Um, yeah, it's one of those where it's, you know it's set in the 50s, 
there's a few things that uh, you know remind you that this is still 50s not way back in time but otherwise it's a, a village that feels like it's sort of been left behind like Brigadoon it's it's in its own little bubble of time and um so yeah uh, I enjoyed it very much. Definitely worth reading. Not one I've heard anyone talk about, so not one of Mantel's better known books. But I think that one might be one of my favorites of hers. Um, I'll have to read a few more Mantel books before I can see that for sure. But, uh, but it was definitely very good. The next book I finished, Diamond Dogs, Turquoise Days, I didn't enjoy as much. It's uh, basically two novellas set in the world of a lot of Alistair Reynolds' other books. Um, so if you've read Chasm City or any of the other books related to that, um, it's in that world. Um, there are actually references occasionally to Chasm City and to events around that. Um, but the novellas really weren't that memorable. They, some of the scenes in them, I vaguely remember that I've read that before. Um, I, they might be novellas that ended up being, you know, bits and pieces showing up in other novels, and these are just fragments that, I don't know. I'm not sure what exactly they were meant to be. Um, they didn't, for me, add enough to the whole world of stories in that universe um, to make them all that interesting. I don't know. Uh, and I vaguely remember them. I don't not remember them. If I read the synopsis, I'd be like, oh yeah, now I remember. And I could tell you the details, but um, not my favorite Alistair Reynolds, definitely. So that was actually one that was in the three and a half star range, maybe 3.75 on Storygraph. Um, and then uh, this, this Sweet Sickness uh, was uh, every, <laughs> every woman's nightmare ex-boyfriend. Uh, who doesn't take no for an answer, can't understand that it's over, and is absolutely obsessed. And he's jealous. And he keeps showing up. And, you know, it builds off of that basic structure um, into a lovely psychological thriller. Uh, there are bodies involved but not really cold-blooded murder at first anyway. Yeah, so uh, one of the things I'm really enjoying about Highsmith's books is that they're not necessarily very body-laden. Um, so she manages to get a lot of suspense and a lot of the thrilleriness in her books without it, it being just a whole bunch of bodies. Some authors, they seem to think that if they throw in a few more dead people, it'll make it more of a thriller. Um, with Highsmith's books, there could be just a death at the very end, and that actually works because the thriller part isn't tied up in there being dead people. Um, so I really like that. Um, so... Yeah, I can't say much more about this sweet sickness without giving away stuff. Um, but it, it was good and definitely um, the sort of scenario a lot of people are thinking of when they have crazy exes that won't go away. <laughs> sort of. Um, and then uh, The Glass Cell I finished tonight before I recorded this. Because I was listening to an audiobook while working on my good or my genre blanket. Here's my genre blanket. It's long enough that it doesn't all fit nicely in the screen unless I pull it back a ways. 
so it's coming along. It's actually a book behind now because I finished a book while I was working on it. So I'll do that tomorrow. Um, and I'm half of a, a book behind anyway because see the top of the blanket is yellow and the top of the blanket should be white. I don't know the colors showing up there. Yeah, there you go. So the top of the blanket needs to be the white sparkly um, in order for it to be caught up. Up to the, you know, where I was before I finished the audiobook I was listening to while finishing the genre blanket. So I'll do that tomorrow. Either while listening to another audiobook or maybe while reading an actual book, but it's hard to hold a book and crochet at the same time. This is why I ended up doing so many audiobooks because um, I do like being able to finish crochet while listening to an audiobook. And I've been trying to finish a lot of projects. I did actually finish a granny square blanket. Um, I will do a separate video talking about my crochet projects probably in another day or so um, and also talk up my new um, Facebook crochet group at the same time, um, the Crochet Whips Challenge, which I will again put a link to in the description if you're interested. Um, it's a annual 12 prompt crochet whips challenge where you match up your works in progress to the prompts and try to finish 12 works in progress that you may or may not have been thinking about that are somewhere in your stash or, you know. And if you don't have anything that fits those prompts, you can start something new. But, um, but just as a, a way to remind yourself of the, the works in progress that you were intending to finish and, you know, hopefully get some more done. And it has worked for me. I did finish a blanket this week while listening to audiobooks. Um, yeah, so uh, for the next genre blanket though, um, so far, so you can kind of see it where the, the blue is. There's blue and then white and then you know, yellow and white and blue and white. And, um, the white is ratings and the, the blue is the nonfiction, the yellow is the fiction, the white is ratings. Um, this is actually the, the grayish grossness color. Um, so that's not the same as the blue. See if the color actually shows up as different on the screen. It kind of does. Anyway, um, so right now there's a color row and then a ratings row for each book. For the next genre blanket, because this one's going to be probably done by the end of February, maybe early March. Um, so the next one is going to have an extra row for anything that's an audiobook that I consumed as an audiobook rather than as a print book. Um, and that's going to be a row that is more laborious, more time consuming, uh, probably involving either popcorn stitches or, you know, puff stitches, something where it takes a little more work and is a bit more fiddly, um, just so that if I choose to do something like this past week where it's all audiobooks, that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm not going to ban audiobooks. I'm definitely not doing that. But each of those audiobooks is not a two-row commitment for my genre blanket. It's a three-row commitment in the genre blanket. And that third row is more challenging. So it's just a trade-off that might make the print books a little bit, just a little bit more tempting. We'll see if it works. Um, so anyway, that's where I'm at. I have a lot of books that I'm in progress with right now. Um, I've been really enjoying the Darling Dahlias and the, and the Voodoo Lily. Um, 
one of my library books. So this one by Susan Wittick Albert. Um, Darling Dahlia's um, is the Garden Club and they end up solving a lot of murder mysteries. Um, they're throwing a, a garden party and they have a um, it's a carrion flower type lily that the flower smells like rotting meat. Um, and there's su superstitions about that if you break off the flower or cut the flower, um, that somebody's going to die. So somebody is accidentally, maybe on purpose, stepped on the lily. Um, it smells gross. And uh, people have been threatening to cut the flower off and do away with it for a while. So now somebody has stepped on the flower and sure enough at the end of the chapter there's a dead person. Somebody has died and I haven't gotten to the next chapter yet to find out exactly how or why or when but that is coming next. So that's a fun one. Uh, House of Rougeau is turning out to be really good. I will be hopefully finishing that this week, so my next update should have a lot more on both of those books. Um, and then Dreamcatcher, I would love to finish this week. Um, I started finally the um, Sources of Chinese Tradition, so this book, and I'm enjoying it. Um, it is readable. It's not written as a reference book. It's written for people to read. Um, so I'm definitely enjoying that. Um, and then I really, 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 really should, I really should be starting The Buddha of Suburbia. Um, this one. This week, probably tomorrow, because this is the one book that if I don't finish it by the end of January, not only do I not get the points for finishing this book in January, but I don't get the chance to ramp up the extra points in future months because the only way that the extra points increases every couple months is if you don't miss a book um, in this game. So if I miss this one, I start over as if it's you know, the, the base point level next month, and it takes that much longer to build up to getting more points. So anyway, um, so that's what I'm reading. I'm also going to be starting another audiobook because yes, I am still going to listen to audiobooks while I'm crocheting, and I obviously need to crochet some of my genre blanket. So I will probably do another Patricia Highsmith I have a couple more um, that I've pulled up on Hoopla, but I did finally log into Libby again as well and uh, checked out a couple books on Libby. One of them is Possession by A.S. Byatt, which is on my TBR already for this month. So that might be something I start this week because it's not an extra book. It's actually a book of my stacks. And then I also checked out um, not The Gift of Rain, but I checked out The Garden of Evening Mists that's on my TBR stack um, as an audiobook on Hoopla. So either of those I could start, and they wouldn't actually require an extra row if I was putting them in my blanket um, in the new rules because they also are on my TBR in print. Um, so haven't decided yet what I'm starting. It is almost four o'clock in the morning here because um, it's really easy to record without interruptions in the middle of the night. So um, yeah, so I will be uploading this probably in the morning or sometime tomorrow. We'll see. Um, it'll probably take about an hour and a half, two hours. So I might just set it starting to upload and um, finish it when I wake up. In any case, um, so this will be hitting my channel on the 22nd proper. 
Um, and hopefully by then I will be diving into some more reading sprints somewhere online and finishing some more books. Um, hopefully you guys are having fun with your books. If you're doing genre blankets, um, let me know if you're showing them off on your channel or where you're showing them so I can see what you're doing for your genre blanket. There are so many ways to do these. Um, and I always love to see how people have chosen to encode their reading in crochet or knit. Um, so yeah, I will catch you again soon. Um, probably crochet video will be the next thing I record and upload in a couple days. <clears throat> and I will have at least one finished project. Um, so my works in progress has gone down by one. But I did start another one to replace it, so, yeah. Alright, talk to you guys again soon. Bye, guys!